Olive Elzinga and we are the student marketing team here with Light in the Piazza and today we're talking with Roy Surratt, our director, to talk about the processes and the different stuff about rehearsal. Stuff about rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> so first question, what were some of the joys in this rehearsal process for you? They continue. We're, uh, what about a three-quarter point, right? We're going into tech in the next couple of days after one day off coming up. Uh, it's been really great. It's been exciting and scary when you're coming into an environment where I didn't really, I didn't know many people in any real way. I'd never worked with anybody. I did get to see a rehearsal of the birds. So I got to see the company in action and that made me feel really good to know that we had a good team. Uh, and, uh, but in terms of people that I'm working with, like Heather and Joel and Joey and Iris, they're all actually new to me. And that's always exciting. And not to mention the stellar new cast of emerging artists, stars of tomorrow today. <laughs> and were there any challenges? There's always challenges in every project and uh, this is an ambitious show mm -hmm. when Heather and I kind of decided that this would be, she'd asked if I would be interested in directing the musical and then we started to look at what were some of the musicals that were out there and we both realized we were kind of in love with this musical but not because it was easy or mm -hmm. it had, you know, potential to, it had, it always has potential to be really wonderful, but it's challenging material. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that's made it uh, exciting is watching everybody rise to the challenge. You were previously the artistic director at the Belfry Theater for a decade and now you're back in Victoria. So what does it feel like to be back? It's good. It's fun. I like, I love coming to visit Victoria. I live in Vancouver now. When I left Victoria, I went to Montreal for mm -hmm. 10 years. I thought, a little bit of winter hardship, trying to learn French, all of that would be really great for me, but I came home and I came back to Vancouver, although my sister and brother-in-law and my mother still live in Victoria, mm -hmm. so I get over here fairly frequently and I also mm -hmm. like to go to the Belfry and come to see things here if I can and uh, visit people. It's been intense though, I mean I found, I thought, oh I'm going to be visiting with lots of people while I'm here, but we work hard and long, <laughs> long and hard hours. <laughs> so uh, I haven't really got too many visits in. Mm. Maybe next week. <laughs> oh no, those are the 12 hour days. Never mind. Sorry, <laughs> people I know. <laughs> what effect did the musical The Light in the Piazza have on you the first time that you saw it? It's one of those shows I've seen one production of. I saw the Patrick Street production in Vancouver six or seven years ago and I quite loved it. I didn't know what I was really coming to. I'd heard of it. I remember when it was being created, it was happening in Seattle. That's where it was developed and it actually had its premiere there before it went on to be a big success in Broadway, on Broadway and then around the world. I thought it was really quite stunning and I had done a couple of projects, one at the Belfry and one uh, in Vancouver uh, that were set in Florence and Florence is such an amazing city have been there. It's like there's more great art there than probably almost anywhere in the world. Uh, if you're like Renaissance art and uh, enunciations and things like that. <laughs> and uh, the plays that we had done were about the power of art. And although that's not really the central theme of this play, it certainly impacts trying to create the beauty of Florence and, and remember the experience it is for like a non-Italian speaker to go into this very intense and very amazingly built and created city is very humbling and awe-inspiring all at once. Mm -hmm. So the play, I think, captures that in a really beautiful way. How do you find that your process as a director differs when you're working on a musical compared to when you're working on a play? You get to share. You get to share the uh, responsibility and the creativity. And I really like that. I'm, I'm a pretty collaborative director, uh, generally, anyway. I like to work with the actors. I like to work with designers. But when you're working on a musical and you get to work with a musical director and a choreographer, it really brings a whole other level. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call myself completely a musical person, but I love music. And I, I, I'm always in awe of really strong singing and watching you guys dance. And, yeah, I, I find it staggering so it's it's great I, I really enjoy the process I've been able to do probably maybe a tenth of the things that I've directed have been musicals mm -hmm. but I've never not had a good time and 
this is no exception to that rule. Why do you think this play is so important to share with an audience, and what do you think people will be able to take away from it at the end of the day? I think it's a really rich piece. It was written originally as a novella uh, by Elizabeth Spencer, who, as it happens, just died before Christmas this year in her 90s. And then it was adapted to a film in the 60s. And it then became this, the, the Broadway, or the musical version of it, I think, came out in, I can't remember, 2005? Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds about yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> Uh, and it's a story, although it's set in the 60s, it feels very timeless in a way. It's about two women, a mother and daughter, who go to Italy. For uh, the mother, it's the place where she had been with her husband, and she'd never traveled with her daughter, and to find herself in Italy, and then to find herself in a situation where her daughter is falling in love with a local boy, uh, and meeting that family. Uh, I, think it, I think it's a really rich story. I love the fact that many of the actors have to speak in Italian. Not only do they sing and dance, but they speak in Italian. And, uh, and they do, they're doing a really fantastic job of that, as far as I can tell. <laughs> uh, you know, Joey, uh, our, our dialect coach, has been pretty happy as well. I, I think it, it's a story about love. It's a story about beauty. It's a kind of got an innocence that runs through it, but it's not uh, overly sentimental. It's also fairly sophisticated. And it talks about love at different times of life. You know, we're watching this very, um, this young couple, like they seem really young. There's a little bit of a secret about the daughter that gets revealed. Um, but then there's also a couple that have been married a few years and are starting to have a little bit of trouble. And then there's some couples that are very established in their marriages and maybe uh, take things for granted. And we find out a little bit about each of those stories and I think the audience will have something to relate to. In, in, in most respects. And it's, uh, the music is so beautiful. <laughs> and to be able to do it with like a harpist and cello and violin and Heather on the keyboards and percussion, I, I, I can't wait, that's what starts. The, the band arrives tonight and I cannot wait to, uh, to hear that. And uh, I think it will be, I think the show will be a really great way for you as a team to show off your wonderful skills because not only do you create the play but you also create the production and the, the sets and the costumes and it's 1953 Florence so it's got a certain elegance and there we've got visual um, visual aids through the magic of the screen behind us etc. So I think it's just a, a transporting kind of show. The fact that we're in this cold, wet January, and we can go to sun-drenched Florence with a little side trip to Rome. Who can argue with that? <laughs> Thank you so much, Roy, for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you, Rose. Thanks, Olive. The Light in the Piazza will be running at the Canadian College of Performing Arts in the Performance Hall at 1701 Elgin Road from January 31st to February 8th. You'll be glad that you heard the story, and the music will stay with you for a very long time, so we hope that we see you there.